Good afternoon. We already started our panel discussion that the key barriers about digital state structures. How does Russia support the experts of creative industries in collaboration with international filmmakers? My name is Susanna Alpirina. I'm your moderator and I represent Rossiska Gazeta. It is published by the government and it is our honor to participate in this event. We have today five great speakers they have never met before and, to be honest, it was quite a challenge to bring them together. And let me introduce them. Ministry of Culture of Russian Federation is presented by Maxim Ksenzov, Deputy Minister. He is in charge of cinematography and digital technologies. Moscow is presented by Alexei Fursin. He is the head of the Moscow Department for Entrepreneurship and Innovations. Roskino is presented by Evgenia Markova. She is a CEO. Hello. Russian Expert Center is presented by Nikita Gusakov, Senior Vice President. Hello. And Moskino and Moscow Film Commission is presented by Svetlana Maximchenko. She is the CEO of Moskino and responsible secretary of Moscow Film Commission. I also present Moscow. <laughs> Moscow is presented by different organizations here today. Dear Maxim, first question is to you. In Russia, every schoolboy knows that cinematography is important. Probably it's the most important type of art. So why Ministry of Culture focuses on this industry and why it's important to support it and how do you do this? Well, I have to say that for the Ministry of Culture, uh, of course, all the uh, aspects of our culture and industries are important and, uh, and still the uh, cinema is uh, not only one important uh, avenue of uh, of our focus, but uh, uh, cinematic industry is also an industry which for quite a long time has been representing us on the international arena. And the movies were basically depicting our daily lives, because previously we did not have any communications which we are using now by default. And uh, films had been showing those uh, things which you uh, could not uh, convey otherwise. Yes, we have a Russian literature, we have a Russian theater. But the film industry in the last century had been using different images and other ways to convey meanings. It was showing Russia to the world, which was very important to us. And uh, we had been paying a lot of attention to this field. And now I believe that this industry is uh, is following the basic trend of the national development and the country is paying more and more attention to the film industry and uh, we do not only pay attention to the creative um, uh, aspects but also to the infrastructure ones and we're building this industry as a full-scale uh, business and industry um, which can manage its own educational, uh, financial, economic issues and uh, there is no other way to, to manage this. And now, now, as a matter of fact, we are trying to restore or rebuild our positions on the international markets. And our movies, we do support some of the national films at the international film festivals, we do the promotion work, we have been promoting our films on the main markets, um, um, on the international arena, and the government support is aiming at promoting the national cinematography, as well as uh, introducing our best films, the Russian-made films to, and the Soviet films, uh, to the international audiences. In 2019, about 95 million rubles had been spent to this end. And uh, uh, we have been successfully participating in the uh, Russian International Movie Festivals. The number of nominees, um, nominees for the American uh, Oscar Award in 2019, you know that the ceremony had been held in February of 2020. He cannot live without the space. Um, uh, cartoon animated film had been uh, made it its way to the short film uh, Dilda, uh, full feature film by Kantemi Dalagov. 
uh, was nominated as the best international film. And the Ministry of Culture will continue its practice of supporting Russian uh, filmmakers um, and uh, providing them the way to the international uh, film festivals and markets. We provide the information support. And basically, today we are witnessing, I guess, the first step in this new format. And like I was saying before, it's a new status and the new quality of the Roskino agency or the Russian cinematic industry. And I'm, um, I appreciate um, Evgenia Markova, who uh, made a huge contribution to today's uh, event. And I also appreciate our colleagues from Moscow and from the Russian Export Center who have been supporting us in these efforts. And we have shown that uh, in a very short uh, time frame we can um, combine all of our forces and to and, and focus ourselves on one line of business and uh, even in this uh, very difficult COVID-19 situation. Thank you for your answer. Later, I will ask you a few questions. I would like to ask about the main focus. What are the directions of work that you support now? Now, I would like to give the floor to Alexei Forsin. And I want to ask you how your department supports experts of cinematography. Yes, uh, thank you, Svetlana. Uh, our department of entrepreneurship is uh, is supporting uh, supporting business, especially export-oriented business. It's uh, very important to us. And while previously we had been supporting companies, I mean those companies who had been uh, producing physical products in the last year, it was a hallmark year for us because we began developing the support system for entrepreneurs who uh, who work in the field of creative industries, in the field of providing not only uh, manufactured goods and services, and we have also began to form a different approach, which is more uh, more specific for these companies, companies of creative fields, and amid creative industries, one bright star is. Uh, film industry, animation film industry, and um, uh, thanks to what they do and thanks to their feedback, we were able to build a totally different approach, uh, which encompasses uh, showing uh, or presenting these companies um, as a part of our bus international business missions and taking these companies um, uh, to international forums and uh, also um, also uh, exposing them to international uh, film markets. In the pre-pandemic period, when we were able to go and to attend these kind of big-scale events, uh, we, along with the Moscow film companies, attended five events. This was the Vancey International Market. Market. This was a Toronto film festival, and this was also an American film market visit and also Kids Screen uh, Summit in Miami. And uh, at these events, we have had over 60 Moscow companies, which introduced over 250 projects, and we are seeing the results, results of these efforts, which enabled us to uh, to see some contracts signed, and we have also seen some very first steps in getting the uh, export revenues. And of course, the number of the companies uh, which are based in Moscow and uh, probably are are the the key players uh, in the film industry of Russia. They are uh, many, and um, and being able to support uh, their expert would not be possible uh, in uh, only in in the part of these efforts. So there are some uh, companies which are um, working on their own or being a part of our uh, programs with the Russian Export Center. We have been subsidizing additionally their cost for. Uh, for them uh, attending these events on their own. So the government of Moscow is subsidizing expenditures uh, for seven events which had been already approved uh, as events which will be subsidized. And now, additionally, we include another five events. Again, it will be uh, American International Film uh, Market. Uh, European film market and uh, all the uh, all the Russian entrepreneurs, those who will be a part of these events, they can subsidize their expenses related to attending these events. And of course, the film industry is quite a big industry, and uh, 
it's a quite a wide-ranging uh, industry. It's not only about the companies who actually uh, do the production, but the companies who also provide uh, different services. And being a part of these events, they can also cut their costs, costs for promoting themselves and promoting their services on these international markets. In addition to promoting themselves and their products and, and the quality of their services, we, uh, thanks to our cooperation with the Ruskino Foundation, were able to build a new approach to subsidizing expenditures to adapt their products internationally to make sure that they can uh, introduce themselves to internationally. This is dubbing um, uh, subs for, uh, for their films. And now these subsidies uh, have been in effect and we are uh, accepting applications to make sure that the Moscow entrepreneurs would be able to save their money on these kind of expenses. Another new uh, line of business which um, could be interesting not only to small but even to major studios and companies. We have provided what we call an export cashback, which enables one to subsidize their expenses based on the revenue which Moscow-based companies will receive. We are returning 10% up to 10 million rubles to companies when uh, they export their products. We do pay a lot of attention to the uh, preparing companies, uh, so uh, along with the Moscow School of Exporters, uh, we uh, do special programs when we uh, train and prepare companies to be ready for these kind of international events. And we do hope that very soon we will be able to uh, continue our operations um, in the in the pre-COVID uh, format to make sure that we can again meet offline. But today's event, and I would agree to Maxim, thanks to Yevgenia Markova from the Ruskino, um, she has been the heart and the engine of this event. It enables us uh, to transition to a new level and um, and support this kind of platform makes sure that even in these uh, kind of limited conditions and um, limited capabilities, we can still now present our content, audiovisual content, and not only the content itself, but also the very possibility to provide services to our international partners. It has become a tradition that we have been preparing for those events, which uh, today um, continue to be run and organized for the film industry center. And Van Sieven, uh Jubilee exhibition is just about to be ready. Again, 24 companies from Moscow will be attending and will be presenting their content. Thank you. Thank you. And we know the cartoons that we will participate in. It's our pride. Now I would like to give the floor to Maxim. We started discussing the platform. We talk about co-production now. How do you support in this regard? How we support production, distribution? Please tell us what are the latest news. And it is very interesting for local players and international players. We in the Ministry of Culture, we support co-production and we support it for three main lines. Direct financial support for projects. Next would be subsidizing. We do support those films which are being built by the Russian producers along with the foreign uh, filmmaking companies. In the framework of the uh, annual contest, and uh, we do make announcements about this contest. Back in 2015 we had had a separate uh, competition to support this kind of uh, joint projects with a Russia minority contribution. And we had launched the production of three projects of these competitions. Uh, Coupe number six, Finland, Estonia, Germany, Russia, leave your mark. Uh, it was Germany, Israel, France and Venice. Uh, Georgia and Russia. And we also support projects by uh, making sure that Russia participates uh, in the Yuri Marshall. 
this is the foundation for the joint uh, production of uh, films in 2011. Uh, Russia has joined this organization. You may may know that this is quite a big deal. Uh, in my point of view, it's quite a big achievement in terms of uh, our international cooperation. And I'm saying that uh, Russia's involvement is quite big, is quite significant, and many projects have um, seen the light, so to speak. Uh, 28 films uh, with Russia's uh, participation have been supported by this uh, foundation, and total amount is about 6 million euro. At the same time, these projects have been attended by the 21 Russian majority projects, and these are well-known films. Uh, which had also been created with uh, Ministry of Culture involvement. It was a um, uh, Rai or Paradise uh, with the uh, uh, Konchalovsky director. They got the prize in Venice. Ico, quite a famous film by Sergei Dvorsov. Uh, Dovlatov by Alexei German uh, won the prize of the German Film Festival. The man who surprised everything, the man who changed everything. Uh, Merkulov, uh, Chup of Estonia, uh, Estonia, France, and Russia. And also Spitak by Alexander Kott. And uh, who was recognized the best uh, editor's work at the Moscow Film Festival. All of these films had been supported with involvement of the Russian Ministry of Culture. Would you support this? Uh, would you continue this work? And uh, we have a joint project uh, of uh, supporting uh, movie theaters and supporting distribution com companies. On a separate note, I can give you some updates uh, of what is happening. We also provide a status of a joint uh, production, co-production to international projects as a part of our uh, prior agreements. And by the way, me and Yevgeny had been discussing this, that the Roskino agency, we would ask them to be more proactive in terms of uh, operating or moderating this work as a part of this international agreement, because we we have quite a solid agreement with uh, very big markets and with uh, some countries and uh, uh, con countries like France, Italy, uh, Germany, uh, Canada, Bulgaria, China, and India. And uh, also as a part of the European Conventions on Co-Production and also with uh, CIS countries, the status of co-production enables uh, enables uh, some movies give them the status as a national film center uh, and, and and give them the status of their financial support which are outlined in the russian legislation so we have been working and we will continue uh, the work on supporting these uh, co-production efforts susanna back to you thank you i will have a few questions later but as you mentioned evgenia mark with evgenia we have heard interesting news. Please tell us, how do you view the development of the industry, how Roskino view it, and what is the role of Roskino in developing the industry? Thank you, Susanna. First of all, I would like to start and thank our colleagues from state bodies because they are here with us today. And first of all, for many years they supported the industry. Ministry of Culture and Roskino, we have been partners for a long time. Moscow Expert Center, they play a crucial role. And we see that this support, it has results. It's not only we who see this, but also our international partners. We are in international markets and we have great products. And for the last four years, we saw a breakthrough. We have numbers that are supported. It is important that annual average growth of our sales is 25% in the international market. And it is a great result. When you talk about number of movies, in 2019, more than 90 movies were released abroad, and it is twice bigger than we saw four years ago. We have a great number of countries where we are present, from 23 countries to 123 countries who talk about different platforms. About box office sales, they increased twice. We received a great number of awards. And it was also pleasant to know that we are among 10, 10 countries 
exporters of TV series, according to international research body. This success shows that only systematic government support together with other players it will bring results and will allow us to achieve new heights. And we can see that we can reach new levels with this. When we look at the organization, Roskino would like to say that it is true that it is an umbrella organization that is functioning the same as international companies such as Unifrance, German films, and etc. And one of the main goals, what we have, we need to consolidate this industry and we need to increase our efforts and we need to increase our international presence and we will talk about it with all the players in the market what is also important the way what I see since I took this office in Russia it's not always the market that is transparent for international players so our goal is to increase this transparency and to be this organization that it is a hub of information so Roskino is a center of information about Russian market, about its players, about projects and opportunities. And for Russian industry, Roskino, we should explain new opportunities to, for working abroad, how they can participate in festivals and different events. This is briefly. Well, it is true. I think that this platform, Key Buyer 7 Digital, it will provide lots of information about Russian movies. This information is well structured and well presented. Now I would like to ask Svetlana Maksimchenko. Recently we started talking about Moscow Film Commission. We saw it in different countries. Right now we have our Moscow Film Commission. How is it functioning? What is happening? Please tell us. Well, it's true. It is surprising that at such big city as Moscow, we didn't have Moscow Film Commission four years ago, but two years ago, by the order of the mayor of Moscow, we launched Moscow Film Commission in February 2018. It was created and it is a signal for the government of Russia that our goal is to make Moscow friendly for shooting, to be a great location not only for local players but also for international production companies. Last two years we supported 900 shootings. The first year we worked mostly with Russian companies, we participated in Russian projects, but we also supported international projects, 18 international projects actually. Among them there were some big names such as TV series Chernobyl by HBO or, or TV series Jack Ryan or, for example, yesterday movie, but these movies and TV series, they were suited here in Moscow just for a few days. We didn't have experience working for a few weeks or a few months, but still this was first step to attract international projects to shoot them here in Moscow. We are, as a Moscow Film Commission, we are like single window for cinema producers. We provide consultations about locations, how to organize shootings. We help to gather all the documents from federal government, from local government. We help to reduce costs when they shoot here. So we are trying to support and to help producers, production, when they want to shoot here in Moscow. What's more, our goal is to overcome different difficulties that they have. It is true that Moscow is quite difficult because it is a great mega city such as New York or London or any other big city. So if you want to organize production here and you want to block specific streets, you need to organize it in advance and we help to do this even when they want to shoot it here in the center of the city. Svetlana, can you please tell us, lots of people, they think that it is expensive to shoot here in Moscow, and what we see is when Moscow is presented in movies, but it's actually not Moscow, and people are afraid, and they're afraid about bureaucracy and price. Is it a myth, or is it true? What are the facts? 
Well, it is really true and I would like to note that when other companies, they shoot Moscow, they want to present Moscow, but it's not Moscow, it's not actually right, because in some movies, Hollywood movies, we see the streets, but it doesn't look like Moscow, and it's called Moscow, and it's very noticeable, so I would like to ask producers if they have Moscow in their movies, please shoot it here in Moscow, so it really looks like this. But what's more, it is very important to know that here it's actually cheaper to shoot that in European countries if you compare it with Czech Republic. It is also because of the exchange rate. And now it is even more beneficial to shoot here in Moscow for international filmmakers if you compare work of teams in European country or in Moscow. And you know that Moscow it is the most expensive city in Russia, but if you go further, it will be even cheaper. So if you compare shooting in Moscow, it is much cheaper. But what is true that most of the companies, they haven't considered Moscow as a location for production, so they haven't calculated it. And we hope that now, when we will have new projects, first project, and we'll have great experience, and Moscow will be more attractive for international filmmakers, and they will have specific calculations, and it will be visible that here it is better to shoot, it is cheaper, and our teams, they are very cost-efficient here, and they do the right things, and they spend money effectively. Well, now we talk about shooting. The numbers that you shared, it was about the time before pandemic, now what you think have changed. Yesterday we received news that shootings in Moscow regions are resumed, but what is in Moscow? When will be allowed to shoot here? Or in other regions. By the way, I believe this is the question more to Svetlana. Actually, and uh, Minister of Culture of Russia, Olga Lubimova, she has addressed Sergei Sabyanin, the mayor of Moscow. It happened um, on Monday. And as far as we know, the mayor is going to accommodate uh, our request and in the yeah, in the very near time, there will be an announce announcement made that the movie production will be resumed in Moscow. And I believe that this uh, will be announced in a matter of days and possibly even uh, during the forum. And speaking about the Moscow region, uh, they had began the cinematic productions uh, uh, starting with yesterday, June 3rd. And now, we assume that many regions and areas are considering this issue too. And as you know, that the, each region of Russia is uh, making their own decisions uh, based on the uh, conclusions of the uh, main uh, uh, sanitary and epidemiology doctors. And it looks like many Russian regions are going to permit a shooting again. And uh, basically what everybody was afraid of. The season is not going to be complete. Uh, it's not going to be uh, lost completely for those companies which had been planning to do their filming in the summertime. As you may be aware, we have addressed the Rospotrebnazot, the Russian Agency for Well-Being of Consumers, uh, to to give us uh, recommendations about how to organize filming processes and how to set up the work of the Russian movie theaters, which is very important. And the rules have been created, uh, rules which are uh, clean and clear of how you can resume your work if you are a, a, a movie theater. It still remains to be seen when all this work will be resumed, possibly in July, but as for the cinematic production, hopefully uh, it will be June, July in the very near time. And I wanted to ask well, excuse me, I wanted to tell you about the Rospatrednadzor. We developed this recommendation and we were taking into account international practices and also our mentality and our specifics. We really learned a lot about our practices. Svetlana, would you like to add anything? 
I would like to know that shooting in Moscow, it was suspended from March 30th, but we have been working and we see that work will be resumed soon. We haven't stopped our work and we received lots of applications and we think that shootings will be resumed in the end of June. Now we are waiting for the order from our mayor and we are ready for a pre-production and we think that summer will not be lost and in summer we will resume our work. Sure, we will follow the recommendation from Rospodrednadzor and also Moscow Film Commission. We are initiated the meeting among regional film commissions. We plan to have this meeting soon with all film commissions in Russia. We want to discuss the status and to exchange experience to share our news, what's going on in each region. We want to be connected and to help film production companies. Maybe they can shoot not only in Moscow, but in other regions. Well, great, thank you. I would like to ask Nikita Gusakov. In Russia, we have Russian Expert Center, and before you focus both on other industries, but now you're focused on cinema. And why? And what we will see next? I would like to say that we have grown up to this content, or maybe it's vice versa, that content has grown up to our level. This place that Russian content has taken on the international arena, it's quite phenomenal indeed, because this uh, kind of growth and this kind of quick market uh, winning, it was hard to imagine. And we are happy that we were able to uh, be a part of that and to support this uh, cinematic movement. And, uh, of course, the, the main reason of these successes was about policies to develop this content and to provide uh, support to this content. And the content quality, which has is, uh, which is increased in the last 15 years in Russia, and the product has become uh, quite competitive. And by the way, we are speaking not only about the film industry, but also about the animation industry and the and the uh, series. Uh, it's in the Russian Export Center. We had begun with uh, supporting um, Russian industries, uh, machine building first of all, but. Um, Little by little, we had been developing other uh, industries and sectors, and at some point in time, I would say about three years ago, we came to realize that services would be also a very important uh, support sector as the physical products. And uh, amid services, creative industries are playing quite an uh, important part, not maybe not in the volume-wise yet, but um, in terms of the soft power, so to speak. So a decision has been made to support creative industries. We begin with uh, simple steps, with promotion. We have been a part of uh, with the Roskino uh, organization to organize a number of events. We have been helping companies to uh, go to international markets and uh, using the Made in Russia. We've been building our stands and booths. And we realized that this kind of support is very um, favorable with companies. And secondly, we realized that when we promote all Russian brand, and it helps companies, not only uh, small but also mid-level companies, to make a statement about themselves and to draw attention to themselves. We have received quite a positive feedback from our uh, foreign clients and customers. And we came to conclusion that, uh, yes, we have an interest to support, and we know why we do this. The next step is a part of the national project for the international uh, export cooperation. We um, developed uh, some in instruments to support creative industry. This was a rebate program, which we had been planning to support this year, and also a content adaptation program. It is a very important instrument which is helping companies to adapt. You know, of course, it's a linguistic language adaptation. And this tool is also a promotion tool for the products. So this would be the, the main area of focus where we can see on one hand demand from companies and secondly we can see some positive effect. And like Yevgenia mentioned, 25% uh, would be annual average growth of export of the uh, uh, cinematic products.
You cannot see uh, comparable growth in other segments, even speaking about the Russian industries and the, in the cutting-edge segments, it's hard to imagine that we could grow by 25% per annum, and, um, and there is even a margin of safety. We do support this level of, we do maintain this level of support and it's going to even build it. Nikita, can you tell us, we want to discuss rebates, but we have another tools and some players they don't know about this, or well, they barely know about this. Can you please explain these tools, tools that international companies and local companies can use? Yes, the scope and scale of the uh, filmmaking business is growing, and we can see the rising demand uh, for the non-financial uh, support measures uh, as, as uh, support, you know, as the film uh, exhibitions, but also financial measures uh, demand. Well, previously we have had measures to uh, support production. This is what the Russian Ministry of Culture and the Russian uh, Cinema Fund are helping. But we are providing different measures which will help uh, the export to export the uh, film products. And as a part of the Russian Export Center, we do have two organizations, Ross Exim Bank. It's a Russian Exim Bank and uh, XCR Insurance Agency. And this uh, palette of financial instruments which we have developed uh, to support the Russian industries. We are adapting it currently for the services sector and for the creative industries. And primarily this would be the bank guarantees, enabling companies to be a part of international tenders, and sometimes even clients and customers are requiring uh, some bank guarantees uh, under their contracts. And also, now we are in pilot uh, transactions uh, for lending. And it's quite important that we can uh, we can provide credits to companies, uh, Russian companies, not only to produce a film, but also we can uh, finance a foreign buyer to buy Russian cinematic products. This would be the key support measure, which is uh, less popular or indeed less known in the segment of services, but which is being used very proactively by the Russian industries. We can predict demand for this, especially when we are speaking about uh, developing markets where the cost of financing is higher than in the Russian Federation. And local companies would be uh, very interested when buying Russian content to attract also financing for these transactions. And thanks to these kind of support measures, we can provide this financing uh, from Russian banks. So we are facing the challenge to uh, provide these tools uh, to companies from creative industries. And most importantly, like you said, it's uh, important for the companies to understand how to use these tools. I hope that they will not be afraid to get the loans. Well, and they will learn how to use it. Yeah, it's uh, good when you're afraid to work with a, with a bank as a borrower, because you are thinking how you're going to return this loan. You mentioned magic word, rebates, and I would like to talk again with Maxim. Last year we supported this policy. Russian expert center supported this initiative of rebates, but then we had this challenge, coronavirus, it seemed to me that our regions, they were very delighted about this program and they started to participate and they were quite successful. How it will be developing? What we should await? Yes, Susanna, the rebate system has been introduced to seven regions and uh, the year 17 to 2019 rebates have been paid off after implementing uh, 16 projects uh, totaling to uh, 70 million rubles. Among the leaders are the Kaliningrad region, introducing eight projects and uh, 43 million rubles, Ulyanovsk region, four projects and 14 million rubles, Novgorod region, almost 10 million rubles for two projects. But the rebate system, as far as we know, very soon will also be launched in Moscow. And right now uh, the uh, official film commissions um, work in the 14 out of 85 Russian regions and 10 of them have been providing uh, practical help in implementing projects. And now we have forwarded a, a letter to all of the Russian regions to understand their local stance and, and local attitudes uh, towards building uh, film commissions. But as for um, rebates on the federal level in Russia, 
The Russian government decree has been adopted in the end of the last year that this uh, mechanism will be regulated by this uh, Regulation 1420, Governmental Decree 1420. And the financing of this project will be a part of the Russian National Projects uh, Services Expert. Um, it's a federal project, uh, federal um, uh, services export, and the pro program will be implemented by the Russian Export Center. And now it's about the joint efforts of the Russian Ministry of Culture and Russian Ministry of Economic Development. But our goal right now is to make sure that this program will be launched as soon as possible. We do understand that due to uh, pandemic of COVID-19, and the current financial situations, we do have some challenges with that, but we also know that the Russian Ministry of Economic Development is uh, searching for funds, and uh, we, the Russian Ministry of Culture, need to uh, launch the so-called Rebate Council, and we hopefully will be taking an active part in it, and we are quite hopeful about that. And uh, we do um, count on, on relaunching this program in this year on the federal level. We have just time for one question, lots of questions we had to Minister of Culture, we talked about production, rebates, but what about distribution and what about cinemas? Will people come back to cinemas? Today we read a new research, 48% of people they are ready to come back and to visit cinemas according to the survey. How do you view it? What Ministry of Culture tells us? Well, speaking about what we do, again, we we using the Rospotrebnazor, Rospotrebnazor, Russian uh, Consumer Wellbeing Agency. We are developing programs in terms of the distribution and the movie production. We have been helped uh, by the industry members. We have developed recommendations and currently we are holding a number of meetings with the representatives of the film industry, with the, uh, with the producers. We had had meetings in the beginning of, the, uh, of this week and next week we're going to have a meeting with uh, distributors and then with, um, uh, with uh, uh, filmmakers. We are uh, preparing in advance to a possible opening, opening up the distribution season. And uh, we have some optimism because we don't have, um, though we do not have many films, but we do have some other drivers. There will be a new Nolan's uh, film, uh, which will be uh, released very soon. It could be the driver to make sure that people would come back to uh, movie theaters. Uh, and we, um, we don't feel uncomfortable about that, because it will enable to bring people back into movie theaters. And then in August, the whole bunch of the Russian films uh, will uh, be presented. It will be very hot in the spring, because um, uh, many releases, many premieres and uh, have been postponed, both all for the Russian and non-Russian films. And now we are uh, uh, in the process uh, to understand of how we are going to organize the film distribution in Russia, what could be the nuances due to a possible second deep or second wave of this pandemic, and how uh, the winter season is going to happen. So the Russian Ministry of Culture is, um, is preparing for that, and, uh, and um, we do not see at this point in time, any big uh, risks, and we are in a constant touch with the industry. So I believe that we are going to bounce back. Well, we have Russia, we have Moscow, we have the world talking about cinematography. Now we'll have Moscow. The last question to Alexei. Alexei, please. What Moscow tells about cinema, about distribution, and how do you want to support our industry after a key buyer's event digital? Well, now we have planned um, a number of events, like I said before. We are planning to be a part of uh, NC and SI with our companies, and still many other exhibitions uh, which uh, have been cancelled so far. 
we still uh, think that these exhibitions are going to happen anyhow and uh, we are collecting uh, some uh, some applications from companies to be a part of these uh, uh, film markets and other events these three months of uh, pandemic have not only changed um, our work have not only changed our approaches but um, they have also changed the whole uh, world in terms of uh, in terms of, um, of um, uh, getting out of this situation is also going to be transformative so we have learned how to work in front of our screen in a remote work but we are uh, we're lacking uh, physical touch and personal touch and at the same time, having learned to work in these kind of platforms, uh, like uh, like the one um, which uh, which has been presented today, I believe that the film companies and animation film companies, um, even if the events will be postponed, they still can introduce their content. They still can be a part of it and provide their services uh, for production and uh, by doing that they can develop not only the Russian export but also the domestic growth of our creative companies now as for um, who are we going to support uh, today Svetlana uh, gave us details about that the Russian uh, Moscow Film Commission never ceased its work not even for a day and um, uh, we, uh, despite, we have been working despite the pandemic and all the projects which ha will be introduced by the Moscow companies uh, to be supported both on the domestic and international market. We are going to support them uh, in terms of their participation in the film markets, in, in, in business missions and uh, in, in festivals. And on a separate note, we do realize that despite the fact that the expert is going to be um, one of the most uh, important sources uh, for companies uh, further development moscow has uh, built a quite a big uh, package of measures uh, to complement uh, federal level uh, business support tools and also would like to mention that, that uh, for many companies today it it is important not only to maintain their rate of growth and uh, and to uh, keep the opportunity to produce uh, audiovisual content but it's also important for them to keep their people not to lose their people and their teams so uh, taking advantage of these uh, support measures uh, for quite uh, a specialized industry as a film industry uh, it's uh, it's very important uh, so that they could offset a number of uh, their expenses and at the same time to uh, to make the uh, transition or exit more smooth. Another thing I would like to point out, it's a trend. It's a trend uh, for, for the Moscow infrastructure of uh, supporting creative businesses. We had been uh, discussing this for quite a long time. And um, a couple of days ago, we gave the status, a certain status to the first creative techno park and uh, this Technoparks is also hosting some animation companies and the film uh, industry companies and it's also I would say our basic support system for companies from the smallest companies for those who are only uh, learning now how to how to uh, create um, the art of, uh, of films up to the big major studios which can be supported in these kind of creative spaces so we have given a status of art play it's a very first uh, star very first platform for creative industries as a techno park uh, and a way to support business uh, thank you thank you these are a great news thank you dear participants of this panel discussion it was really interesting it is the start of our event key virus event i hope that it will be useful for all participants of this industry all state organizations and my colleagues different newspapers and media thank you Evgenia, we wish you great work and lots of success and we will follow the events Thank you. Good afternoon.